This is the Mayono P421 Professional Cardioid Microphone Kit. Okay, coming in from Mayono. My, my ono? This is a professional condenser USB microphone set. I'm only showing you this portion of the box because over here is my address and I don't want any weirdos turning up uh, to my house late at night. So this is the AUPM421, if you like, professional audio innovation. It's a complete microphone set that uh, retails for about £66 off Amazon. Uh, they have sent it to me for, for review um, and partially subsidised the cost of the microphone uh, in order to get me to do something with it. Uh, this is uh, a particularly good looking microphone, um, obviously being a, an all-in-one uh, solution for people is kind of attractive because they don't have to worry about going out and getting all the other odds and ends. Uh, you can get it all in one and for £66 what's not to like. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to record on this temporary microphone setup right here and then I'm going to switch over to this but it's a USB microphone so I'm going to <laughs> retrospectively record the unboxing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and pretend to waffle my way through this and probably waffle my way through it uh, on my microphone. And the recording you hear from now will be on the microphone itself. So this is actually what it sounds like. It's right up in front of my face. I noticed that the gain is actually quite low, but it has a polar pattern, which is cardioid. And there's a heart shape that comes out from the microphone. Well, actually, it comes out of this part of the microphone. Um, so it'll be right in front of your mouth. The frequency, frequency response is 20 to 20,000 hertz. Sensitivity is all of this here. And there's a 24-bit depth. SNN ratio is sitting about 74 decibels. And the maximum SPL is 125 decibels. There's the polar pattern here. And you can see that it is pretty much like a, a heart shape there. So that kind of confirms the cardioid point. And the frequency response is here in a nice graph that's almost level. There's a shock mount built in with a popping shield that goes around here, or a sibilant shield, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, the desk mount um, and the, the actual stand that it sits on. And then at the very bottom, you have uh, the genius idea of being able to slot it into this holster that sits on the uh, on the desk and you can remove it if necessary if uh, without re removing the actual clamp that goes on the desk it's very handy uh, which is really good if you're uh, on limited desk space and need to put the microphone away at the end of the day or something like that then this is the USB connector uh, that's USB B and uh, it just hooks directly into your computer. It's a bit of a shame that it's not XLR, but what can you do? There's some more features as well, if you want to have a pause and read through them uh, as to what to expect. It's all that kind of stuff. This is their website uh, where they offer support, and uh, you can also buy it from Amazon, I suppose. So inside, uh, being careful not to reveal my address once again, we have a user manual on the top here, which uh, looks quite nice. Uh, it's it's quite large. We have the microphone, microphone capsule, mute touch panel, and LED indicator. You press this button here, and it mutes it, uh, which is really nice. It seems you having to go into the client or whatever. You can just tap that button, and it'll work. It's touch sensitive. Uh, there's a mic gain built in and a USB connector. It's a shame there isn't an XLR on this, but uh, I'll probably mention that a few times throughout this entire thing because I prefer them. We have the stand, the popping filter, the shock mount, the microphone, the cable, blah, 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 blah. We'll go through all that as we take them out of the box. You can see someone singing here and uh, an example of how to sing into it, uh, which way around. So you've got to have the actual logo facing you, which is pretty, ha which is a good reminder. It is. It's a thorough detailed manual, um, which I thoroughly am happy about. Uh, it's got a bunch of stuff for you to read about and uh, tips and suggestions as to how to get it working. 
Then, of course, there is the windshield here, which is always useful to put over the top. Uh, it really helps, again, with sibilance and uh, popping and whenever people talk like this into your uh, into your microphone, uh, the popping shield obviously helps. This helps a bit more and blah, 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 blah. You can be chatting and chatting and then uh, uh, get uh, wind noises from your teeth and mouth. There's a warranty card here with some information about what you can do, sharing and stuff like that, a typical warranty card that you would expect to see in some of these products. And um, they're usually pretty good at replacing something if something goes wrong. So the popping shield is uh, relatively small. It's not a tennis racket, as some people might just like, like to think of. Uh, this is... Uh, a a tip, very typical connector. Uh, I've been podcasting for about 10 years and this particular connector is a typical one. Um, the foam sometimes comes off whenever it sticks to the stand for any amount of time. Um, but yeah, there's nothing you can do about that. That just is, is what happens. Um, this actually tightens in and uh, clamps against the the metal and the harder you do it the more likely the foam is to stick to the metal there's, there's no getting around that that's just something that happened that's the law of physics or whatever i don't know someone will explain that to you if you go and ask them in a school or university uh, this rigidy bit uh, is is quite quiet to move around initially there was some noise there but i think that was the first time it's been moved so it's kind of cracking into place This has a bit of a raised end that you can uh, focus in and uh, tighten in so that it holds it in place. It's not quite as raised as I've seen in previous uh, versions of it, but uh, it, it works and I can't imagine it's going to cause too many problems. Um, it may loosen a little uh, from time to time as you're using it, but it's easy enough to tighten up again. Uh, build wise, it's quite good. The popping shield itself is quite small um, I that you can get larger ones uh, the one I'm using right now is much much larger um, it's about six inches across maybe and it does feature the logos but uh, what are you gonna do it's plastic and this part is metallic um, but it it works and it's not something that you move terribly often uh, once you get it in, in the right position you kind of keep it there unless you knock it slightly and then it just requires a little bit of correction but uh, they don't need to be the most durable in the world underneath we have the the guts of the treasure inside um, we have a cable uh, which is USB B uh, to USB A isn't it something like that um, and it's of a significant length uh, because I'm retrospectively recording this, I drop it here and I'm not going after it. Uh, the shock mount is pretty good. It looks very typical of what you would expect from these sorts of things. Uh, you open it up like this and then drop the microphone down in. That screw thread goes onto the top of the stand and then you tighten it with that bit as well. Um, it's it's aluminium, uh, elastic, it's crucial and uh, it's nice to have it included in here. Um, this is just a... A, a typical type. I have multiple of these sitting around um, and uh, you always need them. Um, the first time I bought one actually cost me an absolute fortune. It was just before podcasting became a real thing. <laughs> and now you get them included with microphones whenever you buy them. Uh, they're mass produced and, and dirt cheap to buy off Amazon and things. This is the desk clamp. Um, this is uh, obviously the bit I was uh, most excited about whenever I was I was looking at it and um, I do like these these really make a big difference uh, this is particularly solid compared to the other one that I have which is a uh, quite lightweight and tin uh, this uh, does feel pretty well constructed um, it's a wee bit out of focus I do apologize for that but um, it's all metal and has a good amount of foam on the bottom of it and uh, it, it just use that to tighten it pop the stand down into this hole and then tighten with that very useful very handy um, and good solid build I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed by that this is a bit of velcro kind of stuff uh, that you use for cable management um, wherever needed uh, there's some silica there and then the actual stand itself which is a very crucial part it's quite short. Uh, you tend to get them in different lengths. This one is one of the shorter ones. Um, half the length or so of the one I'm using quite now. Um, but, you know, for a for a desk, this is still pretty handy and useful. And generally, it just uh, serves to be able to push it away once you're done with it. 
Um, this is a bit of an odd thing down at the, this side. It's the first time I've seen it in a different color. Um, but these uh, mechanisms are pretty much standard uh, as you just clamp the piece of metal here in between these other two little uh, well, clampy bits and it holds it in place. Uh, if you release it, which you sh shouldn't really have to, but uh, some people do to adjust a bit more. Um, it usually comes in just the right setting so that you don't have to uh, worry too much about adjusting it. Uh, if it becomes loose then it can be a bit of a pain in the ass to have to put back together again. Uh, that attaches to the bottom of the shock mount uh, but it does seem to be a bit of a an a, adjustable ring that you can take off and uh, attach it to another shock mount. I think one of my shock mounts is that smaller size as well so uh, you can uh, intermix things. This end has a little piece that fits down inside the actual uh, desk mount and it's uh, cylindrical and doesn't feel the the most strong if anything one good shove could probably bend it as it's just a bit of you know uh, bent tin or aluminium or whatever it is um it's lightweight it usually sits at the back of a desk somewhere and it's uh probably going to last uh, but unless it takes one big knock or something like that when being moved um, it, it could bend which is something to be wary of fitting it into the one that I have there so it is some kind of a universal size and it, it would be fairly simple to replace they are quite cheap on Amazon now it folds up into a fairly easy to store size and it it all looks rather well Finally, the microphone that you're currently listening to, it feels quite nice. It's sturdy, it's black and metal-y. Uh, it, it is quite big, I suppose, but um, it, it does look like a pretty decent little microphone here. It's odd having grills around the other edges of it, but I guess there's probably a reason for that. Um, but um, that's the main reason why people sometimes get it the wrong way around. The first time I did the Tech Addicts podcast, we recorded the first couple of shows uh, with the microphone the wrong way around, which um, it, because it wasn't just obvious which way that microphone should have gone. Um, there was one little dot. So, well, we have the USB at the bottom. Um, which is a bit of a shame, the XLR should be there. We have the gain knob on the front, uh, which I don't really think makes much of a difference. Um, I have it full at the moment. Uh, if I turn it down, you won't be able to hear me. Uh, there's a mute button, which is very easy to press, actually, if you're adjusting the, the microphone. Tapping the microphone, you can hear that it, it, it does. <laughs> it's, it's solid. Um, so in the original schematics, whenever I saw them on Amazon, you could see that the microphone was actually, you would be able to see the recording element in there, which would be quite quite nice, uh, a bit of an, an odd uh, design idea, but uh, I guess it's, it's black, so we'll just have to go with that. It would have been quite nice to see it there. Um, it looks great, I have to say. It, it does look like a nice microphone. It's a very typical design and uh, a nice feeling piece of kit. So one thing I will point out is that whenever you're putting the microphone into the shock point, you can see that uh, the the knob itself actually becomes quite uh, almost inaccessible because of the elements of the shock mount. If you were to lower it down, then you, the, uh, the, the microphone might become a little bit unstable. So you're best keeping it at about this level uh, so that you can actually get to the knob to twiddle with it. Uh, yeah. The sound quality is pretty good. Um, whilst I put things together uh, for you to have a look at it all assembled, um, you can you can hear that uh, the microphone does perform quite well. However, this is up full the the most, so you don't even have the option of using the XLR to put it into uh, a phantom sound helper jobby thing. Um, Whereas you you can get them for USB microphones and that, that you would probably actually need one just to give that that little bit of extra vavoom, but uh, it's drawing the power from the computer to power the the microphone, so you would expect that it would be uh, a really decent 
level of sound that would come out of it, but unfortunately it's not. And uh, I've, I've had a look through, hook through all my settings, and everything's up to the max, and this is what we're getting. Whilst it works perfectly well, and uh, you can hear me perfectly well, maybe I am a, a twinge or a tiny bit too loud, um, it, it does, uh, it sounds pretty good, and th there's no real adjustment. If I was to take the gain and actually twiddle the knob, I'll just turn that down that way. You can hear that's down to, that's 50% uh, on the gain. And I'm, I'm just going to turn it back up again because I'm a bit paranoid about what's actually happening to it. And then if I tap the button, me that muted me there because I said something insulting to you and uh, you'll never know what that was. So, uh, back to the video, and uh, I'm, I'm still putting it all together, the, uh, the, the, the shield and the sh shock mount won't be shockingly bad or anything, they, they will just work perfectly, um, as, as you would expect. It's the length of life that you will get from them that you need to be concerned about. And for these products, they aren't too bad, uh, the, the build quality is decent enough, um, they're not going to take the kind of abuse that you would get in a professional recording environment, but for someone sitting in their house like I'm doing right now, they do the job very well. And I'm going to be using this uh, microphone for the next wee while. I'm going to try recording the next couple of podcasts with it. Uh, so I will introduce it in the... Uh, I will use it in place of my regular microphone for the Tech Addicts podcast. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what the actual quality difference is on it there although having to keep it uh up front and keep it right in front of me and uh the the volume all the way up is going to be a little surreal and i don't think i think that makes there uh less of an ability or less of an option for error so that's uh the myono myono microphone all in. I quite like it. I think it's a nice design. It's certainly an excellent backup microphone for me uh, if ever I were to need one or to have it uh, attached to my camera setup for doing unboxings or that sort of thing. Although it's not XLR, so that makes it a little bit more difficult. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, turn on those notifications and uh, give us a wee thumbs up if you fancy. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you get the opportunity and tune into the Tech Addicts podcast. It's usually released weekly. And there's always talk sport as well at half past midnight on a Wednesday morning where you can listen to myself and the hosts of the sports bar have a chinwag about all the latest and weird and wonderful gadgets. And other than that, take care.